On a warm California night on August 20th, 1989, Lyle and Eric fatally shot and killed their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. In my opinion, this isn't a complex case. This is a simple case. They were abused their entire life. However, will a jury believe them? Let's find out right now. Wednesday, my Cajun cuties. Yes, it's me, Anne Marie, aka the Cajun Crime Queen from Karenka, Louisiana, Cajun born, Cajun bred, and when I die, I'll be Cajun dead. I hope after this video that you like, subscribe, and comment, and don't forget to press the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, Anne Marie. I hope you have a beverage. I hope you have a snuggle partner or a snuggle fur partner. Those are the best, and you're ready to hear a true crime story with yours truly. And as always, I want to know. Are y'all drinking that water? Are y'all staying hydrated? Are y'all getting those tickers up? Remember, just a quick 20, 30 minute walk, especially first thing in the morning, get those endorphins up and you are going to have an amazing, wonderful day, I promise you. And as always, thank you so much for joining me tonight on this Wicked Wednesday evening. I am so happy that you are here with me. And tonight we are going to cover part four of the Menendez Brothers. And tonight I have on my free the Menendez Brothers shirt. I don't know if you can see it. I have so much hair, but I wanted to wear it and I wanted to tell y'all that I am so excited that they may be getting out of prison prison very soon. Isn't that exciting? And I'm here to talk about everything with y'all tonight. The murder of Jose and Kitty Menendez captured the nation's attention but captured even more when the only two sons of the victims, Lyle and Eric Menendez, were arrested for the murder of their parents. There has never been a question of whether or not Lyle and Eric Menendez murdered their parents. They admitted and they insist that they murdered their parents out of fear and self-defense. The Menendez brothers say they endured a lifetime of physical, emotional, mental, and essay abuse suffered at the hands of their parents. However, the prosecution did not believe lie on Eric Menendez. The prosecution believes they murdered their parents out of financial gain. The prosecution says that they believe that the boys found out that Jose Menendez was going to change his will. And for that, the boys murdered him and they murdered their parents for one reason and one reason only, simply greed. Lyle and Eric Menendez were both charged with two counts of first degree murder with special circumstances for lying in wait, which made them eligible for the death penalty. Now, could you imagine, could you imagine when these boys finally feel they are going to get some relief when they have been essayed, mentally abused, physically abused, emotionally abused, bam, they may get the death penalty. After all the years of the abuse they, they had endured, they may all of a sudden be sentenced to death if found guilty. How horrible is that? Do you know how scared and terrified these two boys were? Gosh, I could not even imagine what was going through their mind. For six months after the death of their parents, Lyle and Eric Menendez had a pretty normal life. Lyle was opening up his own restaurant and Eric had hired this wonderful tennis coach in hopes to become pro. As I told y'all in several of the videos before, both Lyle and Eric Menendez were amazing, wonderful athletes. Their father, Jose Menendez, was described as a monster at the time of his death was worth around $14 million. And as we all know, that is a lot of money. And Kitty Menendez, a former beauty queen who was described as a selfish, enabling, alcoholic, and drug addict who encouraged her husband's behavior and who was also very violent to both her boys. This was very scary, but both boys were about to go on trial for the murder of their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. In the summer of 1993, nearly four years after the brutal murder of Jose and Kitty Menendez, their two sons, Lyle and Eric Menendez, went on trial for their murders facing the death penalty. 
Lyle Menendez was represented by Jill Lansing and Eric Menendez was represented by Leslie Amerson, both fantastic defense attorneys. Eric Menendez lawyer, Leslie Amerson stood up and made a statement and said, this case is about why Jose and Kitty Menendez were murdered. Why did this have to happen? Lyle and Eric Menendez claimed self-defense and said they honestly believe they had to take matters into their own hands, even though it did not seem rational. Lyle Menendez took the stand and says that he was abused by his father starting at the young age of six years old. And around the age of 11 years old, Lyle Menendez says that his mother, Kitty Menendez, started making him touch her all over her body. Lyle Menendez cried and was very upset on the stand. You could form your own opinion, but in my personal opinion, when I watch Lyle Menendez on that stand, I 100% believe that Lyle Menendez was physically, mentally abused. And I do believe that Lyle Menendez was essayed by his mother and his father as well. Lyle Menendez said the abuse from his father stopped when he was around the age of eight and the abuse from his mother stopped when he was around the age of 13. Both of these parents, in my opinion, were very sick and the way they treated both of their, their boys was outright disgusting. However, when Eric Menendez took the stand, he said the abuse from his father didn't stop until he killed his father when he was 18 years old. Yes, Eric Menendez says he was abused by his father from the age of six to 18 years old, 12 years. Yes, 12 years, Eric Menendez says he was essayed by his father, Jose Menendez, and it didn't stop until the death of his father. Eric Menendez told his old, older brother Lyle about the abuse, and not long after that, the boys shot and killed both their parents. Eric and Lyle Menendez purchased shotguns for self-defense and protection because Jose Menendez had told both of his boys that he would kill them if they did not keep the abuse a secret. The final confrontation between the parents and the boys happened on August 20th, 1989, the night of the murders. It was said that both boys went upstairs and as they were going upstairs, Jose and Kitty Menendez went into the den and closed the den's door. When the boys testified, they both said that when the parents closed that door, that was extremely unusual, that the parents would never close that door. But on that particular evening, the parents shut the den's door. And that is when the boys believed that their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez, were going to murder them that evening. Now, as you all know, when I research a case, I look into everything. And a lot of you have messaged me and said, Anne Marie, when the boys walked into the room with the shotguns, couldn't they tell that their parents were not planning to kill them that night? Could they tell their parents were just sitting on the couch watching television? Yes, I'm sure they did notice that, but they were not in their right mind at the time. The only thing the boys were thinking when those two shotguns were aimed at their parents were, we're here to get this job done and we want to walk out. The boys snapped that night. They wanted the abuse to stop. They wanted everything to end. And the only thing that they thought in their mind would end all of this abuse was to murder their parents. And the boys believed Jose Menendez's threat. The boys believed that if the abuse got out to anyone, if the boys went to the police, that Jose Menendez was so powerful that no one would believe the boys and that Jose Menendez would murder the boys. So the boys wanted to just end the life of their parents and try to have a normal life. Because in my opinion, after hearing and watching everything with the Menendez brothers, no matter what, 
these two boys did not have a normal life. Everything was controlled by their parents, even at the age of 18 and 21. Lyle Menendez was still being controlled by his father and Eric Menendez was still being essayed by his father. They wanted it to all stop. And the only thing that was on their mind when they walked into that den that night was self-defense. If we don't do this to our parents, they may do this to us. That is my personal opinion. But I want y'all to tell me in the comments down below, do y'all think that night the boys were thinking that they should stop if they walked in the room and saw their parents were not planning on killing them? Or do y'all believe that the boys just snapped that night and wanted to end the life of both their parents? The defense calls numerous witnesses, relatives, and friends who described seeing physical and emotional abuse by both parents. One witness was the niece of Kitty Menendez, Diane. Did y'all remember I spoke about Diane? She says that while she was living there, Lyle was around six years old and he went into her room and asked her if he can sleep in her room because his father was touching him down there. When Diane told Kitty Menendez, Kitty did not believe her or Lyle. Another witness they called to the stand was the nephew of Kitty Menendez, Alan Anderson. And Alan Anderson says he spent many summers at the Menendez home. And he says that he saw physical and mental abuse that the boys endured by their father, Jose Menendez. He also says that he found it very odd that if the boys did something wrong, Jose Menendez would scream and yell at them and tell them to get in the bedroom. And that is when Jose Menendez would shower with the boys. And he says that Kitty Menendez would do nothing to protect her boys. He says he also found it odd that while the boys were in the shower with their father, Jose Menendez, Kitty Menendez told Alan, her nephew, not to go near the room or in the hallway that the room was in. Why was that? Why couldn't her little nephew go near the room or in the hallway that the boys were in the room with their father? Why? And I'm going to pause right there. Kitty Menendez did nothing to protect her children. And this is a woman that I said, I told y'all in the very first video, this is a woman that would nurse birds back to health. Remember, she, uh, Law describes that if the birds were hurt, if they would fly into the window, she would pick them up and take care of them and nurse them back to health, then let them go. Kitty Benendez nursed these birds back to health, but did not protect her own flesh and blood, her own children. She allowed the abuse to continue knowing that something was going on between her husband and her two boys. I don't know about y'all, but no one is going to hurt my children. I would have broke down that door so fast and I would have told him some very choice, colorful words because nobody, I don't care who you are, nobody would touch my children. And Kitty Benendez did nothing to protect her two boys. Another witness that the defense called to the stand was the cousin of Lyle and Eric Menendez, Andy Cano. May he rest in peace. And remember that name, Andy Cano. Andy Cano took the stand and says that when he and Eric were younger, that Eric asked him if it was normal for he and his father, Jose Menendez, to be touching each other in inappropriate areas. Andy says that Eric looked at him and says, do you and your father do these things? Is this normal? And Andy was like, I don't know if that's normal. My father's really not around, so I couldn't tell you if that was normal or not. But Andy does remember he and Eric having this conversation and that Eric told him, don't ever tell anyone that I'm asking you these questions and don't ever tell anyone what's going on between me and my father. So Andy never said anything. Another witness says that when they arrived at Jose and Kitty Menendez's house, there was very explicit videos playing in the background. 
I don't know about y'all, I told y'all in one of my last videos, if I walked into a home and I saw some very explicit stuff on a TV and it was some kind of, you know, social gathering, I would have been out there faster than I came in and went straight to the police. But Jose Menendez thought this was normal. Another thing I find crazy, this is really crazy. When the prosecution was looking for someone to say something nice about Jose Menendez, they couldn't find anybody. They couldn't find anybody. They couldn't find not one person to say anything remotely nice about Jose Menendez, not even his own family, friends, no one. The only person that said some things nice about Jose Menendez was his secretary. No one else said anything good about Jose. Everyone said the same thing about Jose Menendez, how he was such a terrible, horrible person that would try to intimidate and manipulate people. He thought he was better than everybody, that he was above everyone, and he often made people feel bad about himself. No one said anything nice about Jose Menendez. Remember that. However, the prosecution believes that Lyle and Eric Menendez thought and planned this murder very carefully. The prosecution said how the boys had driven almost two hours to San Diego to purchase the shotguns, how they had collected every single shell casings after the murder to make sure their fingerprints weren't on them, that they thought about this murder, that they got rid of the guns, that they made up this alibi. The prosecution said this was a well thought out plan and that these two children, Lyle and Eric Menendez, murdered their parents. And this was a premeditated murder that these boys thought about this for a while. And yes, I'm sure they did take the right steps to cover their tracks. I'm sure they were scared, they were terrified and did not know what to do. But remember, these boys wanted the abuse to stop. And the only thing that they thought in their heads would stop the abuse was murdering their parents. And how sad is that? How sad is that the boys only thought in their minds, the only thing that would stop the abuse was to end the life of the parents. And that's just horrible. That's horrible. They felt that this was their last hope at a normal life. So they did cover their tracks, but they just wanted to live a normal life, a normal everyday life, and they didn't want to be abused any longer. But the prosecution was not buying it. The prosecution argued that the essay allegations were made up and there was no mention of anyone being essayed until several months after the murders occurred. The prosecution stated that Eric Menendez did not tell his psychologist, Dr. Jerome Ozeal, about being essayed. And the prosecution also said that Eric Menendez did not relate anything about being essayed to his friend Craig when he was making the confession about murdering his parents. But I'm gonna pause right there. Unfortunately, I have known people that have been essayed and that have been physically abused by a family member. I have never been through that myself, but I want to tell you all that I am here for you. And if you ever just wanna talk, I'm here for you. And there's always help with anything, anything in life, especially if someone is being essayed or abused in any type of way. But the people that I have spoken to said that they are ashamed, that they feel disgusted, that they do not wanna tell anyone about the abuse they are going through. And they often feel that it is their fault when they were being abused. And that's just horrible. These people told me they felt like they could not open up to anyone about being abused, especially by a family member. And Eric Menendez, remember, could not say anything to his psychologist, Dr. Jerome Ozeal, because as you all remember, Dr. Jerome Ozeal had to sign a letter that was written by Jose Menendez 
that stated that Dr. Jerome Ozil would have to relay everything that Eric Menendez said back to Jose Menendez. So Eric Menendez did not feel that he couldn't mention anything to Dr. Ozil because if he did, it was going to be relayed back to his father, Jose Menendez. So no one knew about any type of, of abuse from Eric or Lyle because no one, not either of the boys mentioned it to anyone after the murders of their parents until they had no choice but to tell why they decided to end the life of their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. As you all know, the crime scene photos of Jose and Kitty Menendez are out there and anyone can go see them. I will not put the crime scene photos in my video, but I'm sure they're out there if you would like to find them. I remember seeing these crime scene photos when I was young, 20 years ago, and I said to myself, why was this crime so brutal? Why would these two boys brutally murder their parents in such a horrible way, such a terrible way? And now that I'm researching the case, now that I dug into this case, it all clicked in my mind. In my opinion, the reason this crime scene was so brutal was when those two boys walked in that room and started shooting. It was a breakdown of all the years and years of abuse that they endured from their parents. Once they pulled that trigger, there was no turning back. They were in there to do what they had to do, and that was the end of it. And they wanted the abuse to stop. And in my opinion, they were in a fight or flight situation and they knew they had to get out of that situation. Even though Lyle and Eric were 18 and 21, they were grown men. They still felt completely controlled by their father and mother. When the boys were finished with the trial, the jurors went and they had to, they had to make a verdict. And the verdict was divided by gender. All the women voted for manslaughter and all the men voted for first degree murder. The first trial ended in a mistrial and that trial was going to be retrialed with Lyle and Eric Menendez. There was going to be a new trial and this trial, it was said that there were gonna be no cameras in the courtroom that there was not going to be as many people talking about the SA abuse the boys endured. Both boys had to do all of this all over again, which was very sad, but they had to have a new trial. On July 2nd, 1996, both Lyle and Eric Menendez were convicted on two counts of first degree murder with special circumstance for lying in wait, as well as conspiracy to murder. Both men received a life sentence with no possibility of parole. The boys were sent to two separate prisons. However, on April 4, 2018, Lyle Menendez was moved to the same prison as Eric Menendez. The brothers were reunited after 22 years. Both Lyle and Eric are thriving in prison. In 2018, Lyle Menendez founded the Green Space Project which aims to make prisons more livable by painting murals on the wall and planting trees. In June 2024, Lyle Menendez earned a bachelor's degree in sociology through the University of California. Both Lyle and Eric Menendez were married while serving time in prison. In 2003, Lyle Menendez married Rebecca Sneed, and on June 12, 1999, Eric Menendez married Tammy Sockham. And now, here we are. 2024. Lyle and Eric Menendez have been in prison for nearly 35 years with no possibility of parole. However, that may change. Do y'all remember Andy Cano, the name I told you to remember? The cousin of Lyle and Eric Menendez. May he rest in peace. He passed away in 2003. While Andy's mother was going through his things in the recent years, she discovered a letter that Eric Menendez wrote to Andy in December of 1988. And this letter says very important things about what Eric Menendez was going through. I'm going to read you a little bit of the letter right now. 
and the letter says, Eric wrote, I've been trying to avoid dad. It's still happening, Andy, but it's worse for me now. Every night, I stay up thinking he might come in. I'm afraid he's crazy. He warned me a hundred times about telling anyone, especially Lyle. Andy Kennell testified at both trials. He said Eric told him about the abuse when he was around 13. Prosecutors say Andy was lying, but that letter was written in December of 1988 around eight months before the murder was found, proving that Eric Menendez did in fact tell Andy it was still happening. The letter is proof. And guess what, y'all? There is another person that has come forward and said that Jose Menendez s him as well when he was around 14 or 15 years old. And on my next video, I'll be, I will be discussing that person. The prosecution believed all this time that Andy Cano was making a lot of this stuff up. How was everybody lying? So all the family members are lying? Just everybody's lying. All the cousins, all the family members, all the friends, everybody's lying. No, I do not believe that. I do believe Andy Cano 100%. And I do believe that Eric and Lyle Menendez are telling the truth about everything. And I also believe that Lyle and Eric Menendez have served their time and they need to be released from jail. And they may be released sooner than we all thought. My final thought, you know, I always give you all my final thought. And my final thought is, I do believe that Lyle and Eric Menendez will be released from prison very soon. I do believe that Lyle and Eric Menendez serve their time and it is time for them to be released and to have a happy, healthy life. As you all know, the DA made, made a decision last week and it is going to be up to the judge to decide the fate of Lyle and Eric Menendez. I believe that it is time for them to live the life they deserve. They did not live a good, happy, healthy life the first years of their life. They have been in prison longer than they have not been in prison. And I'm very hopeful they will be set free. I also hope that when you watch this video, you remember that I am always here for you. And anything that you need, I am here for you to talk to. I know that in times like this, people always need a person that they can go to. And it's me. You can always message me. I'm here for you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you like, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget to press on the notification bell. And as always, stay safe. Always be aware of your surroundings. Always know that I'm there for you. And always know that I want to thank you for all the love and support. And for you, I am truly grateful. I hope you'll have a good night. I hope you all have a happy Halloween. Be safe and remember to always check your candy and have a great time tomorrow night for Halloween. As you all know, Halloween is my favorite holiday. And as always, I love you and I hope you'll have a great night. I will see you next week. Bye.